Is it fair to use DNA profiling in databases to solve crimes, or are we stepping into a minefield of ethical and legal issues? Welcome to the world of forensic science where DNA profiling has become a common tool in the fight against crime, but as with any powerful tool it's not without its share of controversy. So, what exactly is DNA profiling? Well it's a technique that allows law enforcement to identify individuals based on their unique DNA profiles. It's like a molecular fingerprint if you will. DNA databases on the other hand are vast collections of these profiles, usually gathered from crime scenes, suspects or even innocent individuals depending on the jurisdiction. Now, at first glance, DNA profiling might seem like a silver bullet in criminal justice. After all, DNA is unique to every individual, right? It's a compelling notion but the reality is far more complex and fraught with ethical conundrums. One of the most prominent concerns revolves around privacy. In an age where data is the new oil, our genetic information is arguably the most personal data we possess. It holds the secrets of our biology, our heritage, and potentially, our future health. So, the question arises, who should have access to this data? Should it be freely available to law enforcement agencies, or should there be stricter regulations? Then, there's the potential for misuse of this data. What happens if this information falls into the wrong hands? Could it be used for discrimination, or even genetic profiling? These are not just hypothetical scenarios but real risks that warrant serious consideration. Lastly, we must remember that DNA profiling is not infallible. It's a tool, and like any tool, it can be misused or misinterpreted. This is especially true when it comes to complex cases involving multiple DNA samples, or when the quality of the sample is poor. But what happens when this powerful tool leads us astray? Let's delve into some real-life case studies. In 1989, five young men were wrongfully convicted for a crime they didn't commit, all because of a flawed DNA profiling. This is the story of the Central Park Five. This incident, which took place in the heart of New York City, is a chilling testament to the dangers of misinterpreted DNA evidence. The Central Park Five comprised five teenagers, four African American and one Hispanic. They were accused of brutally assaulting and raping a woman jogging in Central Park. The investigation was fraught with inconsistencies and lack of solid evidence. Yet the prosecution relied heavily on DNA found at the scene. The DNA was linked to the boys, but the methodology used to establish this link was questionable at best. Their conviction was largely based on the match between the crime scene DNA and their own. However, what the jury didn't know was that the science behind DNA matching was not as infallible as it seemed. The technique used, known as DNA profiling, was in its early stages, and the potential for error was high. Furthermore, the investigators failed to consider that the DNA could have come from a different source, a possibility that was later confirmed when the actual perpetrator confessed to the crime. The Central Park Five spent between 6 and 13 years in prison before their convictions were vacated. This case spotlighted the serious implications of relying too heavily on DNA evidence without considering other factors. It demonstrated the potential for wrongful convictions when DNA profiling is not used responsibly or is misinterpreted. This incident sparked a national conversation about the use of DNA evidence in criminal cases and raised important questions about the reliability and misuse of DNA profiling. It highlighted the need for rigorous controls, proper interpretation, and careful scrutiny of DNA evidence in criminal investigations. The Central Park Five is a stark reminder of the risks inherent in DNA profiling, but unfortunately, it's not the only case. This story is a cautionary tale about the potential pitfalls of DNA profiling in the justice system and a reminder that this powerful tool must be wielded with care to ensure that justice is truly served. In 2004, a fingerprint misidentified via a database search led to the wrongful arrest of Brandon Mayfield. Let's take a deep dive into this case. Brandon Mayfield, an Oregon-based lawyer, was arrested and held for two weeks on a material witness warrant in connection with the deadly Madrid train bombings. The key piece of evidence? A fingerprint found on a bag of detonators near the scene of the crime. This fingerprint was initially linked to Mayfield due to an incorrect match made by the FBI's Integrated Automated Fingerprint Identification System. This system, akin to DNA databases, relies heavily on technology and human interpretation, both of which can be flawed. Despite Mayfield's protests of innocence and the absence of additional corroborating evidence, the fingerprint match alone was enough to hold him in custody. This incident highlighted a critical flaw in our criminal justice system, 
The over-reliance on a single piece of forensic evidence, even when that evidence is based on a system known to have potential errors. The Mayfield case serves as a stark warning about the dangers of placing too much trust in DNA databases and similar technologies. While these tools can be incredibly useful in solving crimes, they are not infallible. In this instance, it led to the wrongful arrest and detention of an innocent man, causing significant distress and damage to his reputation. The implications of this case go beyond the personal impact on Mayfield and his family. It raises serious questions about the use of DNA profiling and databases in criminal investigations. When used correctly, these tools can help to ensure justice is served. But when they are misused or relied upon too heavily, they can lead to miscarriages of justice, as was the case with Brandon Mayfield. The Mayfield case serves as a reminder that while forensic technologies can be a powerful tool in the fight against crime, they must be used responsibly and with a thorough understanding of their limitations. These cases are just the tip of the iceberg. Many more people have been wrongfully convicted due to flawed DNA profiling. We must strive for a better balance between technological advancements and the preservation of justice. So, what happens when DNA profiling goes wrong? It's a question we must ask as we delve deeper into the world of DNA forensics. As powerful and valuable as DNA profiling can be in solving crimes, it's not without its potential pitfalls. Unintended consequences can emerge and they can be devastating. Imagine being convicted of a crime you didn't commit. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? Yet this is a real risk tied to DNA profiling. The science isn't always perfect and human errors can occur. A simple mix-up in the lab, a contaminated sample or even an unintentional bias in interpreting the data can lead to wrongful convictions. Innocent individuals can find themselves serving time for crimes they had no part in, their lives irrevocably altered. Then there's the issue of privacy. DNA is the most personal data we have. It holds our genetic secrets, our familial ties, our predispositions to certain diseases. When our DNA data is collected and stored in databases, who has access to it? How is it used? Is it ever misused? These are questions we must grapple with as DNA databases continue to expand. The potential for invasion of privacy is significant, and it's something we cannot ignore. And let's not forget about the potential misuse of the data. In the wrong hands, DNA information can be used for nefarious purposes. This could range from identity theft to genetic discrimination, and the repercussions could be wide-ranging. So how do we protect against these risks? It's clear that safeguards and regulations are needed. We must ensure that DNA data is collected, stored, and used responsibly. We need to have stringent checks in place to prevent errors and bias in DNA profiling, and we must have robust legal frameworks that protect individuals' rights and privacy. As we continue to navigate the complex world of DNA profiling, it's crucial that we keep these risks in mind. We have a responsibility to use this powerful tool wisely and ethically. It's a balance we must strive to maintain as we seek justice and truth through science. DNA profiling is a powerful tool, but it's not infallible. In our journey through the ethical labyrinth of DNA profiling, we've seen the highs and the lows, the triumphs and the tragedies of this potent technology. It's a tool that can bring criminals to justice, yet, if wielded without caution, it can also shatter innocent lives. The Central Park Five and Brandon Mayfield cases underscore the conspicuous pitfalls of DNA profiling. They serve as stark reminders that while DNA evidence can be compelling, it can also mislead, resulting in grave miscarriages of justice. The unintended consequences of DNA profiling, too, are considerable. From the potential for genetic discrimination to the risk of identity theft, We've seen that the misuse or mishandling of our genetic blueprints can have far-reaching implications. The power of DNA profiling lies in its ability to draw precise and personal information from our genes. But therein lies the paradox. With great power comes great responsibility. As we delve deeper into the secrets hidden within our DNA, we must tread with caution, respect and a keen sense of ethical responsibility. The potential of DNA profiling is undeniable. It can solve cold cases, exonerate the innocent, and bring closure to victims and their families. But we must also acknowledge its limitations and risks. We must ensure robust oversight, stringent safeguards, and the fair and ethical use of this technology. And let's not forget, at the heart of DNA profiling is something fundamentally human. Our DNA is more than just a biological identifier, it's a deeply personal part of who we are. As such, our genetic privacy is a right that deserves the utmost respect and protection. As we continue to unlock the mysteries of our DNA, 
we must ensure that we do so in a way that respects our rights and our privacy. If you enjoyed this video please like share and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.